Welcome to The Stack, a weekly podcast where we discuss the latest in the world of marketing, sales, and tech. I'm Sean Henry. And I'm Ryan Sylvester. And today is Thursday, January 17th, 2019, coming to you from the Pepperland Marketing Studio. Or somewhat of a studio. In beautiful Cheshire, Connecticut. Beautiful, always beautiful. And today we are trying a a new thing where we are going to be recording a video version of this at the same time we're doing the audio. So maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. It all depends on how well it goes. (laughs) And well, we may we'll do see. this live in the future as well. So mm. we're also having beers. Yes, we are. So if you do watch the video, cheers. Um, so each week on the show, usually we have a third person with us, but uh, he's out uh, fixing his car, I believe, um, or or slacking off. We have no idea. Playing with cats, yeah. things like that. Um, yes, yeah, so we're missing uh, Tim, who's usually on the the show this week, but he'll be back next week. But each week we go through um, some of the content, news, headlines that uh, caught our attention. Mm-hmm. And I got the first one. What um, we got? So let me just toggle back here. This one comes from BuzzSumo. It's from Kamel Anderson. Um, and the, the headline here is Best B2B Content Analysis and Insights from Over 50,000 Articles. Whoa. Um, so this is basically like it, it, it shows... Uh, past benchmarks so what good content was ranking for and how like the the norms of how to get there and it goes into um like evergreen score and it goes to backlinks uh social engagement and interactions and i wanted to hit you with a couple metrics um so social engagement in 2018 if you were quality content you were getting about 415 interactions on social media it's a lot of interactions it seems like a lot and now they're saying that in 2019, you should be shooting for roughly like 600, which it kind of contradicts like what we what we see with the decline in social media. But they do spike out um, this very important uh, step two underneath the social sharing is don't neglect LinkedIn. And they go in to say uh, LinkedIn sharing was on the rise while other networks were declining. Make sure you have LinkedIn as one of your social share buttons. So interesting. Interesting. Um, Backlinks of five or more. Okay. And this is my, I hate, I hate this part, but it's top B2B headline phrases. The future of how to use, (laughs) need to, how to create. I just, I feel like I see them all day long. Yeah. Like the future of work. Yeah. The future of cat jackets. (laughs) Fill in the blank. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And it, it, it really like tees up a lot of cool, um, just like milestones and steps to take and, and what you should really shoot for and, and metrics to keep in mind when you're creating high quality content in 2019. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's interesting. I, I, I do find posts like this kind of interesting, but, um, BuzzSumo always have, they, they always have like these headlines analyzed 2 million posts. Like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Well, so. I'd, I'd want to segment it out a bit. Like, I'm very curious what content types work by industry or by, you know, size of business, right. you know, by uh, reach and so on. Right. Um, because, you know, the the big players are probably skewing it pretty heavily, I would yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, so my takeaway here is if you have no existing data to make decisions around, you know, you can't go and look at your own past performance, see what type of content, what headlines work best for you go to benchmark studies like this and use it as a starting point. But really important, you want to go back and see what actually worked. Do some testing, you know, um, come up with your own playbook. That's Another annoying takeaway that I, I'd spiked out in the notes is um, list format blog posts. We see them all the time, but increasingly get engagement. So even if you're sick of them, you might want to sprinkle a few of those into your cool. content plan. Cool. So. We'll check it out. We've got a link in the show notes. The next article comes from Joy Deep. B from the SEM Rush blog. Um, <laughs> apologies for not saying the last name. I just don't want to mispronounce it. But the uh, article is how to boost SEO with question keyword optimization. And this was really cool. And I, I just read it before the um, before the show. And in the article, Joy Deep outlines a pretty thorough breakdown of how Google retrieves um, answer and question-based phrases uh, in search results and um, tells you, pretty much what you need to do if you want to have your website showing up in these uh, question and answer style rich results in uh, in Google to get the featured snippet. But before she, oh yeah, I don't know, before she, I didn't look. 
Oh boy. Oh man. Oh man. Oh well, no. Yeah. So before they go through the, <laughs> <laughs> oops. Um, before they go through the, uh, the article, they, they do a great job at kind of taking a step back and, um, you know, explaining why we see these things in search results. And it, it is tied back to semantic search and Google's ability to, you know, ever increasing ability to understand the intent and meaning behind a search. Um, so factoring in all the things Google knows about the searcher and the words they're using, what other searchers have done in the past. What's that true intent? And um, the reason you get this question and answer style format in search results is because if somebody is typing in a question in search, their intent is pretty clear. Like the information that they're looking for is can usually be answered fairly directly. Mm -hmm. So Google's trying to do that. They're spitting that answer back out to you. Um, and again, the article does a great job of breaking all this down, getting into the technical side of how this works. They, they clearly did a lot of digging to, to understand this. Um, but then, you know, in a really useful way, they tell you, here's the different types of questions and uh, that appear in search. And here's how you might format your content in order to, to be the one featured as the answer, which I thought was pretty neat. So here's my thought, and I'll get your insight as well. Uh, Ranking and getting these featured snippets for question format queries, mm -hmm. it's likely unqualified. So while it's good for your traffic and good for exposure. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, is would you agree with that? Maybe. So we, we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of grumbling that, well, you know, Google's just <laughs> giving the answer in search. They're stealing our traffic. Right, right. Um in those instances, if, if like literally all they want is a quick and dirty answer, right. that's fine. You know, don't bother bringing them to your website. Um, you know, you, you're still the brand that answered it. You know, Google's mm -hmm. still saying that this came from this source, you know, so you're maybe getting some more brand recognition, which is a good thing. Maybe that'll help you later. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're not getting that click to the website because Google gave the answer directly in search results, that's fine. That's all the searcher wanted. You know, they would have came to your website and they would have bounced right away. Right. So not a, that big of a deal, in my opinion, if you are losing some traffic because of this. But I actually have seen in most cases, if you get the featured snippet or if you're the rich result, you're the one that answers the question. A, you've kind of informed them in a way that is accurate, hopefully, you know, and is aligned with your messaging and your brand. So you've influenced them in some way. But B, they're going to want to learn more. You know, you've already earned their trust. So they're going to come to your website and continue to explore. And if they do that, it's like you have done this initial round of qualification and you know that's a better visitor. So you could see quite a bit more traffic if you are the website that's answering the question, um, but possibly more engaged, more qualified mm -hmm. traffic as a result. All depends. Interesting. Very different from query to query. Interesting. Like uh, what temperature should my cheeseburger be? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Is it 175? I used to know all that. I was surf safe certified. Yeah. See, that's that's a query where I will not click through. Right. But gotcha. uh, yeah. Interesting. Indeed. Uh, last one here on the list uh, comes from Orbit Media. It's titled The Content Strategy Framework of the Top 1% of B2B Companies. And this cool. comes from Andy. Um, and this article basically walks through uh, conversion-driven content, but focusing on your service pages rather than blog content. And I included a screenshot because I thought it was pretty compelling. And it shows conversion rate for blog landers, so people that are landing on your blog posts versus people that land on your service pages. And visitors that started on a service page were 50 times more likely to convert. So this whole article goes into this deep dive on how to structure your, uh, you know, he says it's going to take a year or so, uh, to structure a year out on how to build up your service page so it acquires links. It acquires like these these qualified traffic uh, people, and uh, getting them to convert on that page. And it's like a really really interesting um, ideology to, to to go through. It's a beast of an article, um, but he tees it up with a nice video in the beginning, which I like. So definitely check that out. Um, there's other. Mm. Oh, and this is what this is what he says. Service pages are definitely. That was a good grumble. Sorry, <laughs> that was a good grumble. Uh, service pages are definitely not link worthy. Ever linked to someone's service page? Probably not. A website without a blog is an online brochure, one one with very low domain authority and rankings. 
It's the visitors who land on our service pages that drive demand. So, but definitely uh, no lie that links to blog posts that are informative, passing on that domain authority to our service pages are still valuable, but getting them to land on the service page first is what's valuable. Very cool. Very cool. Looks like a a good resource. So I'll have to read through that. Oh, you didn't read, you didn't read through it. I did not read through it, but you know, they, they, they publish great content. Yeah. Um, We've, we've mentioned their content, uh, in past episodes. So really, really tactical stuff. Yeah. Um, I like tactical stuff. That's, it's the best content I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this, but like, I, I love the idea of publishing your own research. Yeah, I think that well, we talked about that a little bit um, a couple weeks back about, you know, dedicating some time to really documenting the, because we do it all the time. Mm-hmm. We just don't think about it in that way, and we should. The unexpected effects buying a blank has on your... <laughs> You're really struggling through this. <laughs> <laughs> Home life. Um, yeah. So, you know, things like that. Like what's a surprising kind of link worthy tidbit that mm. will eventually tie back to your product. Yeah. Give it a try. Interesting. Um, on to app of the week. I pulled this. I thought it was interesting just because uh, we kind of talked about, well, briefly talked about LinkedIn. Um, but this hash test app. Uh, find out what hashtags will help you reach more users on social media. Hash test allows you to test out hashtags with our on-demand grader. It will score your hashtags. So you can find the best one for your social media channel. So basically what this does is you can test out um, a hashtag and see if it's like saturated, see if there's like a bunch of other people that are out there using the same one because you don't want to just fall into the other pool of people. So it gives you like other options. And as you're typing, it will turn green if it's a good one or yellow if it's meh or red if it's a bad one and you don't want to choose it. So if you're really looking to grow your social media presence, uh, definitely recommend it. Hashtags increase content engagement by an average of 40%. This is coming from them, but I've seen that all over the place. It's definitely true that the more you use the hashtags, uh, the more exposure you're going to get and people will find you. So I think now on Instagram, all those, well, I think it's been there for a while, but the more you use hashtags, the more it goes into the explore tab. Sean, do you use the explore tab a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just like... It, it, when Instagram sees that it's related to one of your interests, it'll show up in their explore and people are bound to find you. So. I think I think we should test it right here. And you want to do it? Yeah. Do what, it up. What do you I'm gonna tweet something. What should I tweet about? Um Oh man. Um Um I really don't want to go to the gym today, but okay. hashtag no days off. Interesting. Okay. But let me uh let me try something here. And I guess while while I'm doing this, do we want to dive into the lightning round? Oh, of course. Of course. Um, oh, this is like top of mind for everyone. So this Facebook 10-year uh, challenge, is it just a harmless meme? Um, my guess is no. Oh, boy. Yeah, check this article out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. I almost did it. We were talking about doing it for the office uh, for our story on Instagram. But then I was like, oh, yeah, you know, we probably shouldn't do that. Uh, Second one is Google Search Console makes inspection URL tool more useful. Do you know how? What? (laughs) (laughs) What what tool was it? Uh, Google Search Console makes inspect URL tool more useful. Oh, yeah. 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 No, uh, they're they're including um, all sorts of uh, additional issues. I believe like console warnings and JavaScript issues and... Um, I mean, I was just using it today and it, it tells you a lot. It's yeah. a great way to get yep. a quick diagnos- diagnostic on uh, your page to see if it's showing I up quick, on Google and yeah. there's something holding up. I quickly looked at it, but it seems interesting. I saw the GIF on their page. Um, caution, GoDaddy is adding unwanted JavaScript to websites. So be careful of that. I don't deal with a lot of GoDaddy, so I, I didn't check it out in depth, but something to keep an eye on. Quick update. Go ahead. So I tried this this app. And the concept seems really cool. And I don't know if I'm using it wrong, but I expected it to be suggesting hashtags while I was typing my tweet. Ah, I think that it does not. It is purely for, I think it's purely for like, as you have an idea in your head. Search and say, "Mm, what should I use? But it's not going to like proactively, still a cool tool. Yeah. But if you're wondering why it's not prompting you to use hashtags, you will be. That's why. 
wondering for quite some time. Last one on our lightning round is Google to discontinue some old Search Console features. And I think you ran into this problem today. Just today, yeah. Yep. We were playing. I, I don't. I should read this, um, but I was uh, playing. I haven't read a lot this week, in case you can't tell. Um, <laughs> but I was uh, I was working with the um, a client who was running into an issue with their um, a, a new blog post they had written. They wanted to submit it to Google and use uh, Google's fetch and render tool mm-hmm. just to verify that Google can see it and to accelerate that content getting indexed in search results. And um, when they did that, they got a little notification saying that the content was blocked by Mm robust.txt. So Google couldn't fetch and render, which of course is a big problem. They did a little bit of digging and found out their entire website had been blocked by robots.txt accidentally by um, their hosting company. Big problem Mm because their whole website could have eventually dropped from uh, search results. Right. So uh, that was fixed and we were just going in to make sure that the changes were reflected and doing some testing. But Um, we were using the robots.txt tester and the old Google search console and uh, it wasn't working. Did not work. Yeah. Google's documentation still says it works, but no, Hmm. not a, so uh, hopefully they don't discontinue that and they bring it over. Let's hope. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Make sure to subscribe, leave us a review. We'll give you a free mug. They're over there. Yeah. Yes, how do you think this video thing went, Ryan? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I know I just either. point at the camera and up because I expect that this is going to work out. <laughs> oh, now you threw mine off. No, um, I don't know. We're, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to work my magic later tonight and see if I can splice these two things together. All right. Well, if you like this, let us know. If you hated it, <laughs> then go somewhere else. Go listen to somebody else's podcast. Um, but no, hopefully you guys found this useful. Um, let us know what type of content you want us to cover, and we'll, we'll try to weave that into the mix. But uh, leave us a review if you did like it. Um, tweet at us. We'll send you that mug that Ryan mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to leave us a review, though, with m- proof. Maybe even some lip balm. I, t- I took some. <laughs> we actually have that. Yeah. I know. I took some from the bag yesterday because we have like all these Google bags laying so, around. So the seriously, office. we'll send you a mug and lip balm. We'll send you a whole bag of stuff. How about that? Yeah. And a, a, a satchel even. A satchel. Yeah. <laughs> All right, tune in next week. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>